A sight for sore eyes, an Aleutian super tanker arriving from Russia, answering Chile's call for help. Down below, volunteers from all over Chile, armed with anything they can get their hands on, battling round the clock, trying to keep the flames at bay. We're doing what we more or less understand needs to be done, but it's not enough. We're all alone here, as you can see. Chile's 2,500 firemen are insufficient. More than 100 active fires are still spreading from central to southern Chile, fanned by a prolonged drought and extreme summer heat. Few countries are as accustomed to natural disasters as Chile. There are constant earthquakes, big and small, tsunamis, volcano eruptions. But bush and forest fires of the magnitude that you're seeing here are absolutely unprecedented. Eduardo Tapia walks us through what was his living room. Only the flagpole is left of what was his home. The family just barely made it out alive with their pets when the flames destroyed everything. It started at 10 in the morning and then the winds changed, of course. So we think it was done on purpose that someone started it. Indeed, some 43 people are under arrest for suspicion of having deliberately set fires that now no one can stop. Many have lost their livelihood. Flor del Carmen Gatica takes us to where the firewood her father stored caught fire. They threw it into the well, saving their house, but losing all their water. What will people do now? The rosehip bushes are gone. My father has been collecting firewood all year for winter and to sell, and now it's gone too. There will be plenty of time for asking how all this could have happened. But for now, the only thing that matters is to stop this inferno from spreading any further. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Portezuelo, Chile.